you know, what is not really talked a lot about on YouTube channels or really just life. We show snippets of our entire life on, on the internet. Just a fraction of what our day-to-day -day life is. That's good and bad. What people haven't seen in this past year for me has been one of the most stressful and just anxiety driven years that I've had. And a lot of it has to do with displacement because I've been, I guess, homeless, right? Homeless. The, I, I'm coming up on a year. I'm, I'm filming this in mid July. I actually moved back to home where I'm from last June, but I started my tiny house build in August. So I'm coming up on a one year of building my tiny house, something I've never done before. I haven't said this to anybody, but I slept at my shop quite a bit. Mentally draining and exhausting place and, and thing to do, but you do what you gotta do. And guys, I will get to going to the tiny house and, and breaking down the estimated price of what I've spent so far, even though I'll give a full breakdown months down the road when it's all done. But I wanted to show you guys what is a good mental break for me and what really helps me. Now, luckily behind me is my dad's house, which is way back there, but is my dad's house. And I've been crashing here a lot as well. And he's been great. Him and Sue have been amazing to open up their doors to me for this very long process. So I appreciate that as much. I got the all new Soundcore Motion Boom Plus new color and I'm going to do an unboxing of it later on in this video and showing the capabilities of what it can do. What I do sometimes about twice a week on the mornings when I just need to decompress is I get away from everybody, I get away from people, I get away from the dogs that are inside, I get away from everything. I'm going to sit on my dad's deck that is on the Charles River and I meditate for anywhere between 10 minutes to 30 minutes. And it's not so much meditation, it's more of like reflecting, gathering my thoughts, but let's go down there and I'll show you what I talk about. Now, fortunately for me, I got this Motion Boom Plus. I can now put it on the deck right there. Calmness of the water, the swing of the deck, it all kind of just kind of mellows you out, right? There's different like utopias for everyone. So what I like to do is I don't like to listen to podcasts. I don't like to go onto social media. What I actually do is I will go on to Epidemic Sounds, which is royalty free music for YouTube. Sometimes I'll put on like a motivational speech, but I actually just type in the word motivation or motivational into the, into that, you know, app that I pay for. And it just is a soothing sound. So let me do that right now. uplifting beat coming through a crisp speaker thankfully you don't want the distraction of a headphone because you can't hear the other you know sounds around you you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to tune that out you want to have something that has a good something that has a good powerful punch to it and that's why I, and I'm gonna talk a lot more about this but that's why I like the the, the sound core motion move plus because it can pack a lot of punch and I can sit here and I can I'm already feeling better I'm already feeling uplifted I'm already feeling ready to go I'm ready to tackle the day and all of my tasks by listening to a music while sitting on this calm river in front of me here. Let's get after it. This is it, everybody. This is, this is coming to an end. This is, I know I've been saying that for like weeks, right? But I like really do feel that it is starting to really culminate and come to an end. I have extended my shop space 
by one month. I know I opened it up to the audience a few vlogs ago on getting your guys' opinions on what I should do. Uh, it was about 70% of people said to go to my buddy's place and finish it up there. And about 20, 30% said, hey, why don't you extend another month here? And I went with the less popular, um, and I can explain why, because I have just so much stuff you know that i need to pack up and put into a storage unit next to my land instead of trying to rush and get everything done in two weeks which i actually think i can get this done in about two weeks time maybe three weeks time or done to the point where i'm like content with the amount that i've done and i can put it onto land and i can do the small 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 detail work up on property i'll be able to have it livable operational in the next two to three weeks so dude when are you going to talk about pricing uh that's what this is about this is going to be about the rough estimate on what everything has cost me in here now this is going to obviously vary from person to person this is going to vary from state to state even i just need to put that disclaimer out there because things can change from city to city state to state or country to country so I'm gonna talk about what I spent roughly, and I'll do a video way down the road later of what I actually did. I'll break down everything by an itemized list on what I spent on everything. Obviously, my price is also gonna be a little different. I have a lot of sponsors in here. Um, I have a lot of, uh, I'm an ambassador for a lot of companies that I've put into the tiny house. So I've also built this as a non-traditional tiny house. I built it more as a like large scale van. I guess is the best way for me to put this. There's a lot of stuff that you guys haven't seen yet. Uh, this piece right here, I'm getting ready. I'm about to cut, I'm about to prep it. Um, this is going to be my loft desk. Like it's a miniature loft. I'll show you when I'm in there. I made one, you might be able to see it's kind of dusty down there. I made one over there uh, out of the butcher block that I used inside my bathroom. I didn't really like it. And uh, I guess this is kind of a tip for everybody. If you don't like something, redo it, do it again. There's no shame in that. Having a local lumber yard like that is really essential if you want to call yourself a builder because you there are some things at those type of places that you can't get at your local big box hardware store like lowe's home depot ace hardware you can't get the stuff like these millwork and lumber yard type places i mean we're talking price i might as well tell you guys this was i think 220 i actually think it says it on the other side I don't know if I scratched it off to to something right here is the shelves that I'm going to be using or they're going to be holding up the shelves are going to go against the wall like so don't have the house lights on in the tiny house I put uh, I have like my work lights on so we're not going to get the full effect in the last few weeks I've been uh, last few days I should say I've been working on getting the cabinetry all done so all of the drawers and everything in here is actually pushed to open uh, I didn't want any hardware on them Hopefully this all opens up. There we go. This is like my big drawer for big items. And then I have a secondary drawer right there. So everything is pushed to open. I even have some pushed opens underneath the bow. Some stuff in there, electrical stuff. And I did my really kind of like decorative lighting artwork thingamajiggy. I had a kind of a vision to use these Edison bulbs. It kind of goes with the whole decor. Um, this is, the, the batteries aren't on, but if they were on, uh, this is the light switch. Uh, I can actually show you guys that in a cell phone video that I took. I finished the loft space. Uh, I've got to build my contraption there for the pro screen projector. So we're going to go over price right now and I'll add everything up and I'll put a total value at the end because I don't, I'm not gonna be able to keep track of all the numbers in my head. So I'm just going to say what I roughly paid for them. And then I will put a final number. What roughly it has cost me to date. Woo. We interrupt this regular scheduled programming to bring you guys the Soundcore Motion Boom Plus. Made for outdoors, sound quality premium. All right, obviously we're gonna do a little bit of unboxing here and check this bad boy out. We got our manual, good packaging. We got some, ooh, we got a strap. We got a shoulder strap right there. We're gonna put some of the things to the test that are on the back of this box right here. USB-C connectivity, which means you can charge this USB-C. And I even believe that if this is its own power bank, so I could charge my phone from it, fully waterproof. I'm gonna test that. <laughs> We're gonna show you what the Soundcore Motion Boom Plus can do. And it is only $180. Let's open this up. 
Okay, well, I was actually expecting a black model, but this is actually a really nice kind of gray model. So I'm actually gonna switch my t-shirt right now into a black tee so that this can kind of pop a little bit on its own. All right, now that I'm in a black tee and you guys can see that just a little bit better on the camera, it really pops now. It has the two woofers right here at the front, the two tweeters on the side, and then you got your base right there on the side. We're gonna connect it to my phone real quick and show you guys a little bit of what it can do. What I do love about this, first of all, it's lightweight. It has a handle, okay? I can hold it very easily. What also I love about this is obviously it's Bluetooth connectivity, but the price on this is only $180. I can use it for my tiny house. I can connect it to my phone. I can stream movies. I can watch TV off of it. Bada bing, bada boom, I now have surround sound at a very, very, very affordable price. Obviously all the links in the description will be below and you guys can check all those out. Now on top of having it inside of my tiny house, I can also bring it on my camping trips with me. If you have watched some of my vlogs of recent, you'll know that I'm building out a truck into a camper. You can always take it with you when you go over to an Airbnb. Always nice to have a speaker with you when you travel. Or how about taking in a spacious RV? Looks pretty small inside of this really nice RV, but you can take it with you anywhere you go. All right, enough out of that. Let's put this to the test because I am in a 60 foot long shop and a 24 foot wide shop. This is a big space. I need to make sure I can fill it with music while I'm out here building. It's a big shop. I'm using my GoPro and I intentionally use my GoPro because the mic is good, it's not great. And I wanna see how well the mic can pick up this so you guys can all hear it. After we test it out inside, we're gonna take it outside and we're gonna do some really cool tests with that as well. All right, so now I have the camera being in handheld mode and I'm gonna put the Motion Boom Plus all the way across my shop space, excuse the mess. So that's gonna go right on top of one of my bags. Already connected it to Bluetooth and to the Soundcore app that is on my phone. There it is. Now let's just play one of maybe my videos because why not? Now if you go to my channel, my introductory video is my second build, which I'll just click on, but I mean to change that, don't you worry. Now I'm on a low volume right now, so let's actually turn this up all the way. It's weird having me show me. I didn't really want the window here. Uh, I got such a killer deal on the van, I kinda had to leave the window here. Now, I turned the volume up on the phone, but I wonder if I can change anything in the Soundcore app, which I'm sure that I can. There's an equalizer in here, and I can actually use the the app to change my equalizer setting. I can change it to a voice setting, Soundcore signature. I can change it to your treble boost i can change it to a bunch of different you know presets that they have on their app already let's take it outside and see how it performs outside i'm in the back kind of lot there's a main road at the front there i don't know if my mic is picking up any surround sounds or anything like that but we are going to test it outside here is going to be my future camping rig you know budget friendly just like the soundcore motion boom plus is also budget friendly i already said i've got epidemic sound uh that i subscribe to monthly and i pay for so i have uh, Destiny Rising, which is a sound track that's on Epidemic Sound. And we're just gonna play that on the Motion Boom Plus. The volume is pretty low right now, so I'm gonna turn it up. We're about 75% volume right now. We're gonna step a little bit away. As I'm walking further away, I'm turning it up. It's pretty good. Some wind. I'm really hoping
hoping the GoPro mic is picking this up because I can hear it loud and clear and I am five bays away. Each bay is 24 feet in length and I am in even with the last bay plus across the parking lot. So I am, whatever that math is, away. I'm pretty fucking far. Okay, let's run back because the last test I want to show is this music playing. Now, I have some water here. The Soundcore Motion Boom Plus claims that it is waterproof. You can submerge it completely in water. So we're going to play that same music while we dump this water over it. I'll go back a little bit in the song because I'll get like the, the effect, the dramatic effect of it all. Why is that so awesome? Well, number one, it rains. So it, having a waterproof speaker in the rain is can be nice because you never know when torrential downpour will happen. If you're out on a boat and you're like on a pontoon boat partying up with your friends and you have music playing or, or just whatever, then if you accidentally, because accidents do happen, knock the speaker into the water, it's still gonna work. So like I said at the beginning, the links for this Motion Boom Plus will be in the description below. Make sure that you go click on that link and check it out and get yours today for under $200. All of this stuff are under $200. This is an amazing price for an amazing product. Now let's get back to the regular schedule programming. We're starting the outside, work our way in. Now, Trail Me Trailer is actually the shirt I'm wearing right now. That's who I bought my trailer from and the frame kit. Trailer Made Trailers offers a bunch of different options, a variety of options. You can just buy a trailer from them. You can buy a trailer and frame kit unassembled, which is what I did. You can buy a trailer frame kit assembled, have that shipped to you or pick it up. You can also buy the trailer frame kit and the sheathing on there with floor insulation taped up. That is another option and I will probably do that in the future because putting the whole frame together it takes a team of people and it was just me and my dad and we had to lift it up with you know uh pulleys and it was just kind of a pain price for them to do it it was like and the sheathing and the insulin it was like an extra like eight or ten grand which was not a lot of money in retrospect that being said i am standing in a shop right now that i spend two thousand dollars a month on i signed a one-year lease you guys know i've already extended by one month that is an extra 24 grand in your budget right there. So if you want to add that to the budget, you can. But if you have a free place to do it, I highly advise getting a free location to build. 24 grand. I could do a lot of stuff to that tiny house or I could have put a down payment on my... I did put a down payment, but I, that was another 20 grand. Trailer, frame kit, unassembled, 18 grand. Again, you have other options that you can do. Space that I'm in, 24,000 for the whole year. If you want to add that 2,000 a month, whatever, plus your utilities, that's another $350 for maintenance fees and then the electric, water, et cetera. So that's like whatever that is. So it's probably an extra 500 a month times 12, et cetera. If you want to add that to the budget. Exterior sheathing, zip system, zip wall. I feel like it's the best. For all the zip, I want to say it was roughly $1,000. And then for the exterior, oh, the tape. Oh my God, the tape. The flex tape is really expensive, like $50 a roll for the six inch tape. Ooh, four or five rolls and six inch flex tape on there. Four inch tape, I think it's four inch. Just regular zip tape, that's like 35 bucks a pop. I've got a whole bunch on there, <laughs> like a lot. I don't even know how much money on zip taping. All the little black dots that you see on the outside, that's actually like a, like a zip caulking. I bought that off Amazon, whatever it was. Uh, I'm probably just gonna have to add like five grand of Amazon stuff. I'll do that when I do a full breakdown of what I spent. Exterior siding and trim. Some is actually up against this wall right here. Uh, I got that at a really, really inexpensive price. I ordered it off a of Home Depot or I went to Home Depot, ordered it at the pro desk for all of the corrugated metal painted, pre-painted, and the trim and the standing seam roof, $2,000, which was just a steal of a price. All the tech screws that are in there, I don't know what those are, 10 bucks a box maybe. 
Not that bad. Okay, I think that covers the outside. We're gonna start at this door and we're kind of just walk all the way around. Uh, the wall theory walls, these are not inexpensive, but I think they're very worth it. They're roughly $100 a sheet. I don't know how many sheets I have in here, but I think retail, I paid less than retail, but retail on it, 6,500 or 6,000 just in wall material. I know that's a pretty penny to pay, but I saved in other places. That's why I did what I did and what I wanted to do. The air conditioning unit, this is one third of the air conditioning unit. So built the ducting system myself. I wanna say the duct alone, just the metal duct was like 300 bucks, but there's an evaporator in there made by Cruise and Comfort. The other piece of the Cruise and Comfort machine is right down in here. And then the condenser fans are actually underneath the tiny house. All combined, it is a 48 volt system. And I wanna say it's like 6,000. Uh, luckily, I'm an ambassador for them. I love that company. Chris, the owner of the company was, uh, gave me a massive discount. I don't wanna say what he gave it to me for, but I am forever in his debt. We'll say that's about six, maybe 7,000. Their units can vary because they have a bunch of different units. All the pipe decor, I don't even know what I spent on that stuff, but we can probably say safely all of it because I've got piping here. I've got piping for the desk. I got the pipe for the shelves, extra random pipe, uh, probably five, $600, probably safely say. Countertops, which would be the bar top here as well as over here. That was an Home Depot order. That was $1,900. Funny that my countertops cost as much as the exterior siding. Ah, the windows, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten windows in here. I bought it from a local place. I will not say who it is because I really did not like their customer service. However, they are Anderson windows. Anderson has been great, by the way. Four windows damaged. That's neither here nor there. Jeez, what did I spend on that? Uh, 6,500, I want to say. Wood. <laughs> I spent a lot of money on wood because I have a lot of wood in here. I also have a lot of maple in here. So that maple plywood was that was a special order. A Garnica wood, or also known as light ply, poplar core, but they have something else in there that makes it like 38% lighter than a poplar wood. Or It is so much lighter than regular three quarter inch plywood, but it has just the same like rigidity to it and strength to it than a regular piece of three quarter inch. So. I wanted to keep my weight down. 10 or 12 sheets on the first round, and then I ordered another six sheets on the second round. Somewhere around 18 sheets of that. That's about 110 a sheet, so whatever that is. Because I ordered other stuff in there, but I want to say my first order was like 1,700, and my second order was like 800. So somewhere around 3,000, give or take, just in the wood I ordered from uh, one particular lumberyard, not a specialty place. The maple plywood was from specialty place. I'm just talking and doing math, guys, at the same time. I apologize. Baltic. Birch, I think I have one, two, three, four sheets in total, making up all of my drawers that I'm personally made up. I had to custom make each and every one of them. Like they're expensive. They come in five by five sheets and they are about 140 a sheet. Not to mention, by the way, the tools. <laughs> yeah, the tools are also expensive. I have them all. Luckily, I'm an ambassador for the one and only Heart Tools, which have been a lifesaver for me. Thank you very much, Heart. Uh, electrical. I spent a little bit less than what a normal individual would spend. Um, now, very, very, very fortunate Jason from Off Grid Solutions came out here and he was able to do all of my wiring for me. I have an entire video on that. That grow watt, 6,000 watt inverter, $1,200. All the other electrical components were actually bought from uh, my buddy Light Harvest Solar. Big fan of his, big fan of Miles and John and the whole team over there. They helped me not only order everything up correctly, they get the best parts at a really, really good price. Uh, and they give you wiring diagrams. Like I said, Jason was very fortunate. Uh, I was very fortunate that Jason came out from Off-Grid Solutions and wired it all up for me. The electrical components and solar panels, I think would have been about 6,500. I got it for a little bit less. I think he gave me the dealer uh, like discount. The breaker box I bought at just Home Depot at your local hardware store, no big deal. The DC fuse box he got me, those, uh, these fuse boxes he got for me, like I said, all the wiring and all the configuration and the bus bars, they're all in there, it's all crazy. You can't see them, but there's two batteries under here. I'm an ambassador for rely on. <laughs> uh, those are two 15 kilowatt hour 
each. So that's 30 kilowatt hours of battery at 48 volt. Each one of those batteries goes for 12,000 or 11,995. I'm an ambassador for Relyon. I love Relyon. I think they are one of the best, if not the best battery company. My first van had four Relyons built by Tiny Watt Solar. I love them ever since then. Never had an issue with any of my Relyon batteries in any one of my builds. And that is why I continue to keep going back to them. But those are expensive batteries. If you wanted to have an entire off-grid 48 volt system, that's what you gotta spend. Already talked about the cabinetry and all that stuff. Backsplash was an Amazon buy. I, I factor that into the 5,000 that I already did. Refrigerator, I went with a low voltage refrigerator and freezer, but you can see here that it is an under counter. I did not want a large freezer in here or fridge freezer. So I wanted something that was, uh, you know, made for under counter. All the other, all the other under counter fridges were just super expensive, just like this one is. Uh, this one goes for, I think, 2,800. This is an Isotherm Cruise 200. I saw it in a buddy of mine's van like a year and a half ago. And I was like, that's the fridge I want in my tiny house. Again, it runs off a of 12 volt. Mostly everything in here runs off a of 12 volt with the exception of certain appliances or the Brava oven is gonna be 120 volt. Um, my air conditioner is low voltage at 48 volt. What brings me to another massive low voltage in my opinion must have especially where i'm going to be putting the tiny house which is in maine all in here is the van life tech just system itself i have radiant floor heating in the floor you might be able to see just the lines in the floor that is not my finished floor so the radiant floor heating by van life tech as well as their hot their heater and hot water system so it is a three-stage system although he only calls it a two-stage floor heat forced air heat which is what those tubes are down there and what i cut into that that is this is hard to price out because they've never done a system like this in a tiny house however they told me if i was to pay full retail on it it would have been roughly 18 to 20 thousand dollars able to give me at a car co at cost i'm not going to say what that is um but it was enough off where i was able to justify what putting a really robust heater in my tiny house heating to me was one of the most important thing and hot water was on the tippity top list of priorities as well as power in general so power and heat in my opinion or just climbing in general are top top priorities which means i'm going with top top product diy cabinetry which is what i claim myself to be uh, you know, other things DIY, but when it comes to that stuff, I want the best of the best and Van Life Tech was the way to go. The heater in here is absolutely ridiculous. From what I'm also told, it is a heater that is used inside of tanks. Low voltage heater, it is it is by far the best way to go. Door was actually just a very simple door, as you guys can see. It's a fiberglass door that I bought from Home Depot, $900, just for a freaking door. Uh, I use GoBoard uh, for all my walls. Uh, each one of those sheets is I don't know, 30, 30 bucks. I think I spent like, it's just a few hundred bucks on that. Tank down here is a, a hundred gallon tank that I bought off a specialty website. I can now forget the website, but I want to say that was like a thousand dollar tank. Uh, although at the end of the day, it's going to be worth it. You got a lot of accessories. I got like, obviously my sinks in my kitchen and my bathroom. Um, you know, a few hundred dollars a piece right there. Again, bought off Amazon. I uh, have a washer dryer unit that's going to be going in here. I believe it's Samsung or LG. It's one of those, but I think Samsung because that's a better brand, I think. And that that was seventeen hundred dollars. It's like boom, that's that's a big 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 payday. Um, you know, all of my plumbing back there, just the water in general. You're looking at an easy thousand dollars, if not more. The shower, you know, whatever accessories cost, guys. Shower pan, a few hundred bucks. And then what is going in here, which I've only showed once is a incinerator toilet. Now, when I first started the whole tiny house build, I actually bought another toilet. So now I have two toilets for only one space, but I'm gonna use the other toilet probably in my shop. I bought a Laveo dry flush and I paid full price for it. And that was, I think 750, maybe $800 for the Laveo dry flush, which is why I was very content in using, by the way. I found this incinerator toilet that is a 120 volt plug-in incinerator toilet and it burns 2000 watts per flush or per burn i should say because there's a flush mechanism as well as a burn mechanism but i'll go into that when i start going over it that one that that one that one that one's expensive but i feel like in the long run it will pay itself off it turns all of my waste into sterile dust 
and I don't have to throw out bags. The company is called Eco John, and they are based in US. Their price was around four thousand forty five hundred, which is a great price in comparison to like the Cinderella, which a lot of people go with. Uh, the Cinderella toilet is also great, but it's like six thousand. However, uh, when I talked to customer service at Eco John, they were explaining to me that. Uh, it just, I just felt better. I felt better about purchasing their item. And it's also black, which goes with my decor that is going to eventually be in here, which is going to be white walls and black like fixtures with, with walnut touches. It's going to look beautiful. All right, guys, that was pretty much a very quick rundown of what I spent. If I missed anything, you guys will probably have seen me cut in and out of me while I'm editing. If I had to guess, I'm without doing the math and you know, without my discounts, probably 60 to 70 into this. My land, I, I took a 15 year loan out on it with 20% down, slightly under a hundred. I'm gonna be all into me living off grid. I'm gonna be into my land for about 150, give or take maybe 160. It's a pretty good deal if you guys ask me. Just to say at the end here, you don't have to go with a extreme robust heater like I did. You know, I love Van Life Tech with so much passion, it's not even funny. You don't have to go with the crazy luxury cruise and comfort. Again, cruise and comfort. I love them. They are the top of the line. They are the best of the best. And if you are like me, then you're going to want some of the best of the best. If you want to go off grid, those two companies are the ones you want to go with. Personally, in my opinion, that's all. If you want a yacht fridge, that's those are what yacht, those are on yachts. Those are on boats. They're meant for the marine industry. They are meant to be taking a beating. The compressors are meant to be beat on. Go with an isotherm. If you want the best trailer company out there, then you're gonna wanna go with trailer made trailers. This is just kind of what I'm trying to say to everybody. I went with a lot of best of the best, in my opinion, because I've done all the research and I spent all the time over the amount, amount of years that I've been doing this, I wanted some of the best, so that's why I did it. <sighs> Uh, hopefully you guys this has helped you guys maybe make some decisions for yourself when i'm done with the build guys i will be doing a lot of breakdowns and comparisons of what other tiny house builders professional builders diyers like myself would use in a heating apparatus cooling apparatus woods and stuff like that i'm going to do a lot of videos on that coming up because i'm going to have a lot more free time because i'm not going to be building this anymore i'm going to have my shop space and be able to talk to you guys and actually show you guys what are some of tricks and tips that i can give to you guys so you guys can help so i can help you either do a van build a container house build a tiny house build a shop build a frame whatever it is you want to do make it off grid whatever it might be i'll be able to help that in this next year so definitely you want to like and subscribe to the channel and the video and all that good jazz but i'll see you guys next time i'm out of breath later